Hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone, here is Peter from Dissolve. Today I'm bringing you a tutorial about multiplying stuff. Exactly how I did it in the latest reel. Uh, for those who haven't seen the latest reel, now it's a good time. Link is in the description, just find it over there. As a side note, I have to say, if you have a chance to shoot it yourself, that's probably the best option you want to go with because you can get this extra information like a background you can make sure that the subject in the video is moving the way you want it so it's easy to multiply in the post but if you don't have that option you're working with already uh, shot footage you still can do that and I will show you how so let's get into it what you need is basically After Effects, no plugins uh, everything is internally and then you need good footage. The whole idea for this reel was taking ordinary locked up shots and pushing them as far as we could and in the process we realized that we don't have to stick just with the locked up shots and that's the final result which you can see in the reel. The right selection of the clip is very crucial here because you can do your work so much easier. Uh, what we are looking for are locked off shots, which means without any camera movement or with really slight camera movement and subject moving in the frame, moving faster than the camera. What really helps is when the subject is entering the frame or leaving the frame, so you have the background information. Uh, generally, we want to avoid water, trees, fire, anything which is really hard to mask out. What generally helps if the subject is moving in slow motion because then we have much more time to play with and we can introduce some time remapping, whatever works for your project. So once you're happy with your clip selection, download the clips and jump right into the After Effects. Once we have the selected clip in After Effects, we can just drop it, make a new composition uh, this clip is in 4K, so that's a good thing, we have a lot to work with. Okay, first thing you will need to do is uh, duplicate your layer. <laughs> and on the bottom one, freeze the frame at the time where your subject knows it's not in the frame. Once you have that, you can see the footage here, the bird is entering right here, so we want to start somewhere here, and the bird is exiting over here. And what we want to do is apply an effect, which is called the difference map. And what that basically do, it takes a layer as the background and takes everything what is different against the background. So as you may see, it's not working exactly as we would like to, but if you make this layer invisible, if you make your composition blue, for example, you can see much better what is happening there. So we have our bird, that's the difference against the background. The thing is that it, the matching tolerance is not quite there, so we want to make, make it much smaller, let's say two. You can see the dithering here. That's what you can fix with softness. And you can play with these as long as you wish. Uh, usually for every footage works different things, so make sure that it works. You can see that sometimes it's, it's different on different backgrounds. For example here, the blacks will disappear because as you may see in the background, it's fairly black, so the difference is not so big. Uh, we can help with that, we can, we can animate these values and change it over time particularly happy with the result. You can still refine it and for that we will use Affect Matte and Refine Soft Matte. What that does is we'll take the edge and just look around basically uh, if there are some points which counts as the subject, which can be useful when it's a little more complicated or when the edge is a little more fuzzy for you uh, to turn on the actual edge detection you can see here that it takes all the points we just saw which is not good let's apply a choker here you can add simple choker add it in front of the refined soft mat and crank it up a little bit and it will get rid of, of 
most of the agut points you can crank it up even a little more and it will get rid of the points and the dither in the video so now you can turn off the edge detection and in this case it's getting a little soft so what I will do is I will crank up the contrast a little bit and also I can move the edge a little bit so it adds up on those edges where we can see that it's disappearing pretty bad. Now let's let's check if it, if it looks good on the, the other part of the video. Now if you have the subject separated and you're happy with it, which this shouldn't be the right result, but you know like playing around with these values you will get into the point where you're just left with the perfection. Here in this case, because the background is black actually here behind these, it's not going to look that bad. Uh, and other values you can you can add, but in this case I wouldn't recommend it, is uh, the chatter reduction, which sometimes it happens that it's like uh, moving on the edges a little more than you would wish. So I usually use the more detailed, it's, it's good enough, it just depends on what kind of footage you have. Also here is the decom decontamination, when something weird is happening on the edges with the colors or it's just smoothing the edge too much, you can uh, crank up the decontamination right here and it will, add, it will give you different results. So it just depends how long you're willing to play with it. Once you have everything set it up, you're happy with the subject cutout of the background, you can turn on the background and you can see it looks pretty well. And now you have the background and since there is nothing moving in the background here, I don't have to really uh, use anything else, I can use the still frame. Uh, and now is the fun part, now I can start to actually multiply things. So. First what we are going to do, we will offset the subject in time. So I will just grab the layer and move it a little forward. We will see right away what will happen. You can see that we need to offset it a little more so they are not crashing into each other. Yeah, right there you have it. Uh, you can check if it works everywhere. Well, that looks nice. And now, depends on the power of your computer, you can start to duplicate the layers uh, the best what I would recommend is probably to offset it exactly at the same time difference but if you have different concept you're playing with it you can definitely offset it by any time value you want it makes a different type of effect when you are happy with the time offset now you have a different way how you can adjust it you have these five copies, you can change the color so you know which five copies are those. You can duplicate it, all of them, move it up, and change the color again so you know which five copies are those. And now you can move it. So let's hit P, bring position, and you can basically just move all five copies in this place. And now you have 10 birds. <laughs> so yeah, once you have this, you can see that it might look a little flat. So basically what I would like to do now is to make these layers uh, 3D. And when you bring up position, you will notice that here is also the Z value. And you can move that. If you move it to negative position, you will move it basically closer to camera. If you move it to a uh, higher value, you will move it more far. In the real, what I did was I offset it only in, in the Z value and it brings up this effect. Uh, if you want now, because it's a locked off shot, it doesn't have any camera movement, you can go and bring the camera movement there in post production. So all you have to do is go to layer new camera, uh, go with the default one. It has the depth of field enabled. so what will happen is uh, it will probably blur it out a little bit if you go down with the aperture. So what I can do in the position, I can basically move the camera around and, and see the whole thing in the 3D space. Okay guys, now we have the, the difference map done, so that's, that's one way how to do it, but what happens if we have a footage where the camera moves? So what do we have here? This is one of the last clips in the reel, is this skier, and as you can see, it's probably drone footage, and the camera is moving. 
quite a lot. So we cannot use the difference map because obviously the background would be different in every frame. So what we can do here, since there is not enough color difference between the background and the subject, we will have to do a mask. So uh, what you can do here is go somewhere in the middle, take the guy and give him just the rough, rough mask around him nothing too serious just going like this quickly uh, I'm doing it even quicker than I would normally for the sake of this tutorial so make sure you're a little more patient than this uh, I will duplicate it delete the mask from here so you can see the background here you have the mask I will just turn off this layer for now and what I will do is I will take the mask I will put a keyframe here move it back okay I will turn off the layer again what I will do I will move the mask here and what I can do is I will just reposition a couple of these you know just basically fit the skier into the mask and I will do that for the whole thing uh, on the places where I want the subject separated from the background. Uh, as you can tell this part is a little more time consuming than the difference maps but make sure that you give it the time. Here I really went through maybe too rough but the, the, the goal here is to get a mask which is at the same distance from the edge of the subject at all points which as you can see is not perfect but once you have that you can go turn off the background you can see the subject roughly masked. Now we can use the same effect, which is matte, refined, soft matte. And now you have these edges, which are basically looking for any sign of a difference in color or contrast. You can crank it up so it actually goes all the way to the skier. Uh, I would recommend to do that mask a little more precise. Uh, it was just the first sake of tutorial. In the real footage, I did the mask really precise. Uh, and keyframe it like every third, every fifth frame, it doesn't have to be that close just because you have a lot of motion blur and the subject is moving pretty fast. So once you have the subject all in the, in the edges, you can turn off the looking region and you see here is almost good looking subject. So if you, you click right here, you can see if it works uh, the same. Yeah, so just with the same settings, I can, I can just play with the contrast a little more. So I have sharper edges here. I can even put more motion blur so it hides a little more those details which can which can stick. Sometimes it makes it a little more smudgy. So if you don't want that, just turn it off. You see, this is pretty sharp image. Here are some problems, here are some artifacts, but I can play with that even more. Now you can even see like if I move this, it's going to look for the edge somewhere else. So it's going to show us this part, which we definitely don't want there. So that's why the rough mask should at least be a little more by the edges of the skier. You will find some parts where it's not going to work perfectly. So you can add some keyframes to the mask. You can, you can play with it a little more. This technique is a little more time consuming. So as much time as you give it, the result will vary. So I recommend to put more time into that and make sure that everything looks perfect. Uh, at the end, you just turn on the background uh, once you have the subject separated and you can basically do the same thing. You can just offset the guy in time and you can see you have pretty good result of multiplied footage. Of course, I would have to do this mask keyed out for the whole length of the video clip. You know the drill. So here you go. This is the last tip I got for you. If you have a specific clip where actually there is a lot of contrast or a lot of color difference, I think you know where I'm going with this. You can use a keying method, which is usually for green screen, but it works basically with any color. So what I did here, I will just quickly show you because it's basically like a tip and you can find more about keying online without any problems. Here we have a clip of a bike rider, so I just put like a more contrast on it. So I have bigger separation between the sky, which is lit by the sunset and a little bit 
orangey. What I used was Ipad, Keying, and Extract. So you can see Extract works pretty well, but once the writer leaves the forest, I can, I can apply it, I, I can put this mask and I have just basically him against the sky, which is a perfect situation. And I used Extract, which worked the best for me. There's a couple ways how to do that differently, but you can basically tell the effect which part of the spectrum you don't want to use. Uh, and if you go back, you unsolo this, you can copy it as much as you want. The thing is that, for example, here in this footage, you can see where the writer goes into the sun. Uh, there, the contrast is lost, so this technique wouldn't work through the sun. Now you can see that the part of the motorcycle is actually missing, so that's where I cut off. You can basically cut them back and all of them are back in this beautiful kaleidoscopic effect. Yeah, so that's about King. Okay guys, uh, that's it from me. I hope you find this useful. I hope you feel inspired. You will go and multiply everything around you. Uh, you can leave notes in the comments like how, how it went, if you had any troubles and I will try to answer those. Subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and tips how to edit stuff or just for inspiration and follow us on Instagram. Have a good one. See you in the next one.